All right, we are concerned with giving names to mm -hmm. how a function can be discontinuous. In reality, there are lots of them, but uh, we only care about three. We're naming them removable, jump, and infinite. The first thing I'll do, I'll give you a quick picture of each of them, but I really don't want that to be our go-to definition, but it's a good place to start. Uh, a removable, we'll call it a hole, okay, and we'll draw it like this. It's any situation where my function would be A-OK, -okay, but there's a hole. Not much else to be said. Whether or not it's defined does not affect the removability. Okay. So, it's removable if it, the dot is there or it's not. All right, jump is, hmm, a jump. So that seems a little bit redundant. But let's draw a picture of it. What's happening at a jump, the one side of the limits don't match up, okay? Uh, doesn't matter which side gets the hole and which side gets the dot. Finally, infinite is uh, an asymptote. And hopefully we know what an asymptote looks like, but I'll draw it anyway for the sake of completeness. Okay, and in each case, the thing that's not continuous or the location where it's not continuous is going to be labeled C, which is this giant red dot that I am now adding to the x-axis. Negle neglected to mention up until now. Hopefully it was evident from context. Mm -hmm. All right. We prefer to investigate this using the medical definition and not the picture definition. And when I say the medical definition, I mean this business. We want to know precisely what goes wrong and what goes right in these three requirements for each of removable, jump, and infinite. Okay. So, removable discontinuity. The key for a removable discontinuity is that the limit exists. Something went wrong with the function. This removable discontinuity would actually go totally unnoticed were it not for that single hole. Writing it down in your pattern of discovering the discontinuity, the part where you did the limit as x goes to c of f of x didn't go wrong. Something else went wrong. That's removable. What happened with a jump discontinuity is that your one-sided limits weren't to the same number. Okay? We got this thing and then we got that thing. Whatever it is. So I'm going to write... So I have uh, removable discontinuity is that the limit exists but something else went wrong. A jump discontinuity is that the limit x goes to c negative existed, it was a number, didn't match up with the other side. All 
Okay? Mm-hmm. Finally, um... An infinite is probably the easiest to detect. Uh, here... The one... Or both... Of the one-sided lens... was either positive or negative infinity. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples of each on a different page. Okay, so here are three examples, uh, each of which has at least one point of discontinuity. Um, first example. Sine of x over x is fine as long as x is not zero in terms of continuous. Now, the issue is what happens at x equals zero. I've tried to define it as zero. We've memorized from class that the limit as x goes to zero of f of x. We didn't memorize that, but we've memorized that the formula they gave us for that which is sine x over x is 1. But the final part of continuity says, does that thing equal that thing? The answer is no. But the key observation was that the limit existed. Therefore, uh, x equals 0 is removable. Okay? For, for this guy right here. Bottom line is the limit existed. Uh, g of x we've seen now. Whoops. I just erased all the functions. It's okay. I'm just going to write g of x again. G of X was this absolute value thing. Mm -hmm. For G of X, we have that the limit as X goes to 2 from the negative direction involves a number smaller than 2, which means that the absolute value of X minus 2, whoops, The absolute value of x minus 2 is actually negative, x minus 2, meaning this fraction is negative 1. We saw this earlier today in abundant clarity, and now we're recording it with haste. Point being, these guys cancel and give me negative 1 from the left. What happens from the right? X is bigger than 2. Which means that the absolute value of X minus 2 is really just X minus 2. And I'll skip the middle part. Cancels down to just 1. What happened? The right-hand limit did not equal the left-hand limit. We could draw a picture indicating as much, but the real diagnosis comes from actually doing the limits. Finally, the last one was... A factoring thing I'm not going to draw this one out because 
like I said, the infinite ones are the easiest. The only thing to pay attention to is something you already seem adept at figuring out, which was this minus 3, which is not in the domain, uh, actually be turns out to be removable, turns out to be a whole. Uh, and then we're going to get x equals negative 3 as an infinite discontinuity because there's obviously an asymptote because this is like negative 4 over 0. This is the quickest way to know that we're going to get infinity one way or the other. All right? Mm -hmm. Three examples, three definitions, three pictures. Three types of discontinuities.